Hello, welcome to the YouTube version of the Empower From Within podcast. I'm your host, Jessica West. On this show, I talk self-help, inner healing, mindset, manifestation, and impact for the creative and soul-led entrepreneur. And in case you didn't know, this is a podcast. Empower From Within is available on all major podcast platforms. So if you enjoy this episode, please go ahead and hit subscribe on your podcast platform of choice. It'll help me continue to grow the show. Thank you so much for being here today and enjoy this episode. Susie, thank you so much for being here. How are you doing? Thank you, Jess. I'm so excited to be here and, you know, Pinterest is what I do. So I'm enjoying this topic a lot and happy to share with your audience. So thank you for inviting me. Yeah, absolutely. I can't wait to dive into it. For starters, do you want to let us know, like, tell us a little bit about your journey and the background of your business? Yeah, absolutely. So I discovered Pinterest as a tool for marketing and business growth when I was working for a chocolate bean to bar factory in Toronto. Um, it was just part of the overall marketing strategy and I was in charge of handling the social media and Pinterest was just one of those uh, platforms that they were using, not the main one, but it was the one that I enjoyed to do the most uh, and where I saw the biggest impact in terms of sales email list growth and visits to the website. We had great engagement on platforms like Instagram, um, but the conversions uh, were coming from Pinterest as a platform. So that's where I encountered for the first time. But then I part ways with that company and then comes COVID and time. I think a lot of us can understand that we have to reinvent ourselves and figure out something else to do. And that's when I find out that actually people hire Pinterest managers specifically and people uh, specialize on creating strategies on Pinterest and I'm like oh okay I love the platform I have done that before I can do it and so that's the long story short of how I came to um, understand Pinterest as a business tool and that's when I started offering my services to content creators specialty brands um, to help them achieve the same results that I did for the chocolate factory uh, for their businesses. Mm-hmm. Yeah, super interesting. I love that. I didn't think that businesses would hire like solely Pinterest managers. Very interesting. So let's get into like, what do you think it was that made Pinterest so different in terms of like the turnover rate or like converting clients, growing the business and even building the email list? How does it differ from things like Instagram? So I think, and at the time I didn't understand it completely, but now I do. So I think I think the main factor is one, Pinterest is not a social media platform, it's a search engine. So the intention on how people use the platform is really different on how they use Instagram, right? Um, for example, the mindset of people on Instagram may be like they're just catching up with friends, maybe just chilling, um, like, you know, finding entertainment or just like looking outside their world, but not necessarily have like a search or, or, or something in mind. But the user on Pinterest, it's searching for something. It can be a product, it can be an idea, it can be a, some sort of help, right? So they are in the platform searching. So when your content arrives in their feed or in the suggestions or in their email, because also there's different ways uh, where your content can reach your potential clients on Pinterest, it's welcome. And if it's helpful, then uh, it tends to convert faster. Um, so I think that, and just to summarize it, the user mindset, people on Pinterest are searching for things and they're ready to take action if it's the right match. Right, right. Okay. So when you say that there's different ways that your content can kind of get out there on Pinterest, email. So does Pinterest send out an email and potentially your business could be in there? Yes. So Pinterest, um, and I don't know if uh, you use Pinterest personally, but when you do, you will start receiving um, emails from Pinterest saying like, oh, you may also like these ideas, or we noticed that you look for, I don't know, um, gardening tips, check out this other content. And so my goal as a Pinterest strategist is to get your content in those emails, in the home feed, and in the related searches, and obviously in the top search results. Right. Okay. Very interesting. So when we're talking about SEO, like or search engine optimization, it really has to do with the keywords, right? But I feel like Pinterest is also like these beautiful photos. So like 
how do you know like what to really prioritize? Is it like the beautiful imagery or is it really like getting that keyword content? So that's a great question. So I think it's uh, the sweet spot is a balance of the both um, because the algorithm and Pinterest can actually scan the picture. So like, I don't know if you've seen, but a lot of pins on Pinterest have text, right? Like the title. Um, so the algorithm can scan the keywords on the title the algorithm can understand what this picture is about. So let's say if we're talking about gardening and um, you have a picture of a beautiful plant, uh, it understands that, okay, this is relevant to the topic. Now, on the other side, you also have your pin title and your pin description. And those ones, you also want them to include um, the search phrases that your potential audience can be looking for, right? Like uh, gardening tips for beginners, easy ways to grow uh, monsteras, you know, or or whatever is it that that um, you're trying to promote or you're trying to help people with. Mm. Okay. So, oh, so and sorry. And on that note, I would say that also it's about your profile and your boards. A lot of people, uh, and this is a very common mistake I see with clients they ignore or don't understand how to create a board strategy on Pinterest. Uh, and in terms of the algo, as a user, you don't care so much, but as a user for marketing, uh, it's really relevant how you strategize your board um, for, the, for the algorithm to understand what your content is. And I'll give you a quick example. So um, this is a pen, right? And it, Pinterest can categorize it as a black pen, or it can categorize it as a writing tool, or it can categorize it as a, um, like, I don't know, pencil pen. So, you know, the, uh, there's different ways to put different buckets to put the same object uh, so that the algorithm re distributes the content to the people that are relevant. So a lot of people go and name their boards like uh, fussy things that I love, you know, but that's not something that people search for or that the algorithm understands. So even if your pin is optimized, your period, you have a beautiful picture, the thing is relevant, it's just not gonna get distributed because the algorithm just is like, I don't know what you're talking about. Right, right. Yeah, that's a great point. So yeah, so for the business, mm -hmm. what would you say would be a good board strategy? Like I'm thinking, as you're speaking, I'm thinking, would that be a good place to have like your pillars, a board for each pillar? So it can be an approach. I would say the best one is think um, categories and let's go back to the gardening example. So it would be anything like gardening tips or the names of the specific plants. A way that I show my clients how to do this when they just hire me for a strategy or a consultation is go and open Pinterest and type uh, in the search bar, like the first, uh, let's say again, gardening. So gardening and Pinterest is going to auto-suggest what people are actually searching. So you don't even need to come up with these ideas yourself. Pinterest will guide you and tell you, okay, so the first result, let's say it's gardening tips. The second is gardening for beginners. The next one is gardening easy or whatever. So you want to be using those to name your boards. So you want to have a board for gardening tips. You want to have want to have a board for um, house plants. You want to, so if you let Pinterest guide you, it will show you all the breadcrumbs of what people are already searching for. Okay, very cool. Okay, so how would you say, I mean, for example, let's say uh, you, you have a podcast, right? Mm -hmm. And I mean, I use social media to promote my podcast. After I have uh, an interview, I'll then create a reel. I'll create, you know, quote polls and things like that to post on my Instagram, Facebook, LinkedIn. Would I also post that on Pinterest or like what other form of content do I need to create? Like it needs to be something a little more specialized, right? Mm -hmm. So in terms of uh, how would you approach it? So usually a lot of podcasters have a website, right? Where they link or where they have a section called episodes, right? Mm -hmm. And then sometimes you can click onto the specific episode and it will lead you to another page where you can have the episodes player and maybe the show notes. It can be as simple as that. You can get more elaborated and you can turn the episode into an actual blog post and add more value, but let's uh, keep it simple. So you just have a URL with your episode player embedded and some show notes. That's 
all you need to have that URL be unique and so that you can share it on Pinterest. And the way I would approach it is if you're already creating those reels, if you're already creating the quotes from uh, from your episodes, then you, you need to create maybe two more graphics with, like I was saying, uh, text overlay with the title or keywords so that people can find your podcast. So again, if you have a podcast of gardening, you would say like 10 plants for your house, right? So you would create that graphic and that's it. You will create that graphic, insert the URL that links back to your episode or even to your whole episode, um, like where you have the whole list URL. And that's how people will find you, click on it, and end up listening to your episodes or going into your email list or interacting in your own space. Okay, very interesting. So we can kind of be used in a way as like almost like a cross promotion thing. So it doesn't have to be a lot of work to now create more content to put on Pinterest. Like I'm thinking of the solo entrepreneur who's putting stuff out and then you got to, you know, keep up with all of the social media platforms then Pinterest could just be yet another thing, Absolutely. but we could still use it to cross promote. So we don't have to create something totally unique for Pinterest. We can just kind of put the same thing up on there. Correct. Correct. Uh, the only key is that you don't, you want where you're going to send these people, right? Like you can send yeah. them directly to your Spotify player, but you cannot track that. Um, so that's a little bit of the... Uh, downfall of that approach but if you send them to your website you can track is, that, is this actually performing right is how does this go and the beauty of Pinterest and I always say this to people who hesitate because oh you know one more platform is one you can batch a lot of work on Pinterest up front and forget it set it and forget it like for months you know, not even weeks months you can do two three months at a time and just forget about it you don't have to do anything with it because it doesn't require like the constant common engagement and likes and interactions it's very different how people engage on Pinterest and the second is that because it's a search engine a lot of the content is evergreen so as long as your content is relevant that one podcast episode can bring you traffic or uh, a new audience for months sometimes years if it's really good Okay. Yeah. So that was one of the questions that I wanted to ask about like, how is the engagement? And if you look at things like Instagram, you know, everyone just wants to get like as many followers as they can get. Like how, how is it on Pinterest? Do you have followers or people subscribe to your Pinterest page? Yeah. So there are followers, but they're not as relevant as the, another platform. So on Pinterest, the metrics that you want to be looking at are impressions because that's going to just show like, is your content actually being distributed? And then you want to look at outbound clicks and saves. Outbound clicks literally means that someone just clicked from Pinterest and left the platform to go to your website. Um, and those are the ones that a lot of people care for, right? Like, it's like you, we want to bring them into our episodes or into our content. And then the other one is saves. Because if someone didn't leave the platform per se, but save, let's say, again, in I love plants, so I'm in the gardening example. Huh? So if someone say save your episode of like a uh, hundred plants that you have to have in your household, um, they it's a very strong signal one to the algorithm because it says that oh this person actually is creating useful content, and two, uh, it means that this person will return to you, right? So saves are also a really good indicator of of a healthy account. Okay, hey. yeah, great to know. How how did you use it to build an email list? Okay. Yeah, so similar way uh, we were discussing, let's say that you have your checklist of 20 things that you need to start a podcast, um, and that's what you promote so people get into your email list. So you would create, let's say, uh, how many graphics you are allowed, I would say no less than five, but you can do more if you want with different, and they don't need to be drastically different. They just need to be like maybe the font, maybe the arrow, maybe the colors, maybe the image, right? No? Um, and you create all of these uh, graphics and then you link them back to your freebie. So again, when someone is uh, searching how to start a podcast, starting a podcast for beginners, what do I need for my podcast? You know, you want to appear 
in those search results, so people say like, oh, let me check out the checklist. And that's how they would then land in your website, sign up and so on. Mm -hmm. Okay. So do people, can you use Pinterest to sell offers in that similar way, but it would direct mm -hmm. people to a sold, like a, a product that you're selling? Yeah, absolutely. You can promote your landing pages, your sales pages, your freebies, uh, like products is great for also e-commerce, um, a masterclass, anything that has a unique URL basically, uh, you can promote. Now, one thing that I always caution people with thinking like, oh, I'm going to put this and everybody's just going to buy my offers is that people on Pinterest don't know you, right? Like maybe on Instagram, they know you because they have been following, you share about your life, blah, blah, so they get familiar with you. On Pinterest, they don't know you. So you want that, that, um, that opt-in to be a small step, something that is easy for me to give you when I still don't know whether I like to work with you, where I like your style, right? So you you don't want them to, to you don't want to have like a, a thousand dollar offer and expect that whoever finds you there is going to convert right away because you want to first like get them in small steps so that now that they are in your ecosystem, they can understand, oh, okay, Jess is great and I really like her content and I really get value. Now I am ready to you know, purchase maybe a course or whatever it is. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah, that's really good. Okay, so would you recommend that like almost like anybody who's in business right now should and, and who's creating content should put it up on Pinterest? Because like you were saying earlier on, like even if you're not consistent, I mean, once you have something out on Pinterest, like it's out there, someone can find it, you know, four or five months from now, but it's out there. So mm -hmm. would you recommend that like, yeah, go and make a make an account for your business and put some things up there, even if you can't be super consistent with it right now yeah, absolutely and especially when it comes to consistency it's also really determined like the algorithm adapts to what you to your cadence so you define what consistent is like for some people i have uh bloggers that have a lot of content so we can be consistent with like 10 pieces of content right and that may be like a lot for someone but if you only have two or three posts per month and that's what consistent means for you as long as you stay with three pieces, let's say, uh, for the next three months, uh, it's considered consistent. So you can achieve consistency easier. Okay. So does it have like an algorithm kind of yes, like the yes. other socials? Okay. Yes. Yes. And it changes all the time. Uh, and there's a lot of updates and that's the fun of staying in the job. But because I'm a person who doesn't like trends and I don't like to be jumping and dancing at the rhythm of the platforms, I do dove deep into how the algorithm of Pinterest works. And so far for the last three years, what I have seen with my clients is that as long as you stick to the basics, as long as you stick to your keyword research, staying consistent, uh, your beautiful graphics and having relevant content, you'll be fine with whatever changes that the algorithm throws at us. You know, sure there will, have a new feature and they will push it so that you use it and so but if you don't and you stick to the basics you will still see results mm -hmm. yeah yeah that's great uh okay i would love just to like provide something like basic basics so that people feel like they can go out and you know create that pinterest account if they don't already and start posting something on their business page so maybe first like where where do you recommend that people do their keyword search to find popular keywords to use in their content? Okay, so for the super easy thing is if you already have a Pinterest account, most likely you have a personal account. So very easily you can go into your profile and switch that account to business. That's the first step that everybody who has a Pinterest account and wants to use it should do, which is turn your personal account into business account. That is going to unlock you analytics tools and the trends tool. Now for the second part of your question, which is where do you, I do keyword research? Do it directly on Pinterest. And like I was saying at the beginning, open the browser on your phone or on the computer, type um, like short, very general, start very general, right? Like if, we, if you are in the podcasting world, start with the world podcast or podcasting um, and look at what Pinterest auto suggests look at those at that list that is going to come out and those are your keywords and if those words are there that means that people are searching for them that it means that there's volume 
Um, the second way that you can do, and this I use most for identifying um, when should I be posting something uh, for my clients is using the trends tool of Pinterest specifically. So once you turn your uh, personal account into a business account, you will unlock what it's called the trends tool for Pinterest. And again, start general, so type podcast. And Pinterest is going to show you how this search term behaves for in the year, you know, like when people search more, when they search less, do they search all year? Because if you find the one that has consistent traffic all year, that means that it's a very evergreen word and you want to always be posting content about that because it doesn't matter Christmas or holidays or summer, nothing will affect it, right? Like the, the volume is consistent. Okay. Okay. Yeah, that's great. Okay. So number one, go and switch your personal account to a business account mm -hmm. or two, take a look at those keywords. And then would you say like number three is just like post something, like look at your last piece of content and figure out like, okay, how can I write, how can I create a static post with the quote poll and then provide information underneath? Yeah. And okay. Uh, before that, I would say once you do your search, your initial search, look at what literally uh, look at what you're seeing what the results look like if you for example i have a client in the nail niche um most of the results that i see they don't have text that means that that's what the algorithm favors and that means that that's what people are looking for they don't want text they want ideas for literally for the nails right so look at your own niche do that and then see okay do I need to have, maybe you already have pictures and you don't need text because, for example, travels or plans. A lot of people are just looking for the visual aspect, right? So it may not even, you may not even need to create a new graphic. Maybe you already have it and you just need to configure it to be the right size and that's it. Um, maybe you will see that, okay, no, I, these are the type of titles that I can add. These are the type of content that is resonating, right? Like it's a little bit of a competition research too because you understand what others in your niche are creating. And if they're in the top row, that's what people like. That means that people are clicking on it. You know, So you want to do something similar. And again, uh, take a look, go to the website, look how they're formatting their content. Do they write it as a post? Is it just like a list? Sometimes it's just literally pictures in a list order, you know? So <laughs> that I would say it's one step before. And then once you identify that, then yeah, go ahead and create your first one and take a look at how it performs. Don't look at your analytics every day. It doesn't work like that on Pinterest, maybe like a couple of weeks, months, uh, and then you can start adjusting. Okay, okay. Yeah, that's awesome. Super helpful. Thank you for those takeaways. And so this is this kind of like what you take your client through, through in your company that you started the Fruitful Lab? Yeah, so I offer consulting. So if someone wants to do them themselves, but they don't know where to start and they just need help uh, identifying and following all of these steps, they need a like a system. I help them with that. And then I also do like a complete hands-off management where like I handle from the strategy to the creation of graphics to the post, like scheduling, analytics, optimization, etc. Okay. So, both, both for whoever wants to do them themselves and whoever just, I don't care about understanding Pinterest, but I care about getting the traffic from Pinterest. That's also a service we offer. Yeah. Amazing. I love it, Susie. And you, you shared so much great information with us. Thank you. I want to take a slight pivot for the next couple minutes that we have, because you also do some work in the podcast industry and you've recently went to the podcast movement. I think that was two weeks ago, right? Can you yeah, tell us? Was, uh, August 19th. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Okay. So I, uh, I'm a Pinterest strategist, but I also love plants, as you can see from my examples. And I recently uh, launched a podcast called Bloom Whispers, where we talk about flowers and their meanings and basically how humans have been using it for all this time. And I was really interested into learning more about the, the industry. And so I went to the podcasting movement for the first time. And it was a great experience, definitely worth it if you're considering and you're a podcaster. Um, you, first of all, connect to a lot of people that are on the same train with you. You learn from people who have been doing it for longer. 
Um, and then also the conferences are really valuable. You learn a lot of the trends, tools, ideas, how to create content more efficiently, um, what's coming up. Obviously right now, video podcasting was a huge uh, theme in the conference. And then they also have this uh, called brain dates that I really like. It was a format where you get to have like more intimate conversations, but it's still kind of like smaller groups of five people. And then you can have one-on-ones. Um, so yeah, overall, it was a great experience just in terms of all the information that I've learned and the people I got to connect with. Yeah, very cool. That's awesome. And I love your podcast name, Bloom Bloom Whispers. That's yes. that's amazing. I'm going to have to check it out. I will be including yeah. that link in the comments of this video yeah, absolutely, to, absolutely. to check it out. Um, amazing. And so when you were there, were any of the podcasts are, like talking about how they use Pinterest to... no which I was incredibly surprised because there were so many tracks and conferences talking about organic growth and growing a uh, podcast audience, but they talk about Instagram, YouTube, TikTok, uh, Google, but they didn't talk about Pinterest. And I was really surprised. So, which is another advantage is underutilized, misunderstood. So take advantage of that because that means that it's not saturated. Right. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Interesting. Okay. And this is still uh, like above uh, 400 million users per month. So it's right. not a small audience. And one more thing is that uh, they have an average household income of 100K per month, per year uh, compared to Instagram. So again, if you have high ticket offers, they may be a better audience for you to reach. Right. Yeah, that's a great point. Thank you for mentioning that. Awesome. Well, I am definitely you know what, I'm probably going to go and reactivate my Pinterest today <laughs> to start putting some stuff on. Thank you for everything that you shared. Do you want to let everybody know where they could find you and get in touch with you if they want to know more? Yeah, absolutely. So you, you can uh, message me on Facebook. I'm also active on LinkedIn. Um, I'm less active on Instagram, but you can also message me. And if anyone of your audience uh, has a Pinterest account and they want me to just take a look, and get a free audit and just give some steps on how to get started. I'm happy to offer that for them. They can just reach out to me on the DMs. Yeah. Okay. Amazing. Thank you so much. And again, I'm going to be including the link to your podcast and your website in the comments below this video. So be sure to check it out. If you're watching this replay again, please put hashtag replay so that we know that you're here. And if you have any questions as you're, you know, rewatching this video, Suzy is in the group, so go ahead and put your questions and we will be monitoring, or I'll be monitoring it, Suzy, and then I'll let you know if we have any questions moving forward. But thank you so much for your time today. This is really such a valuable conversation. I'm really so happy that you came on. No, thank you for the invitation. I really enjoyed it. And yeah, if anyone has further questions, I'll be happy to answer anything. Okay, amazing. Thank you. Bye, everybody. Thank you.